All right, welcome to part three of the replication video. So, like I said, the last one we're going to cover here is run on server. So, in order to do this, um, we're actually going to make a new event down here. So, I'm going to say add custom event, and then we're going to say run on, or uh, sorry, we're going to say set color and then server. So, we're going to set this one to run on server. So this one up here, let's actually change this. Uh, actually, I'm going to change this back to multi and then multicast because we're going to need this one. So now we have two set color functions. We have one that is multicast and one that is run on server. So let's actually make this take in a color. Okay, so what we want to do here is Again, I said um, in the last video that run on server means that uh, this message gets replicated from the client to the server. And this is the only way you can do something like that. As I mentioned before, if you had a replicated variable, there's no way you could replicate it from the client to the server. Uh, you, can't, you cannot do that with replicated variables. You can only do that with um, this event specifically set to run on server. This is the only way. So there are some gotchas with this. And the biggest gotcha is that this function will only actually run on the server if it's being called from the client who owns the actor with that event that this event lives in. So if you don't own the actor and you're trying to tell the server to, to change something about it, it won't let you. And I'll demonstrate that here in a second. So to set this up, let's just go over to our third person character and let's make it so that whenever um, the player presses like the P key or whatever, the color of the box will change. So I'm just going to write some code here. Nothing amazing. Just um, let's say input key P. So whenever they press the P key, let's just say get actor of class. I know this is kind of horrible code, like you'd never want to do this because this function is kind of expensive. But just for the sake of an example, um, we just want to get a reference to this box or this cube. So we'll get our cube and then we will say set color server. And so let's set this to green. Okay, so basically, again, just to recap, all we're doing is we're pressing the P key, we're finding our cube, and then we're saying set color server. So let's actually look at this function. So what we want to do in this function is we want to multicast to everybody the new color. So we'll just say set color multicast, and we'll just pass along the new color. So again, just to kind of recap, we press P, we get the cube, we say set color on the server, then we then are now on the server, and now that we're on the server, we multicast it to everybody, which then comes up here and actually sets the color. So what you would expect to see is when we press P on either one of our clients, um, it should tell the server to set the color, and then the color should be set on everybody. So if we try, go ahead and play this. Let's try over here on the server, pressing P and seeing what happens. Okay, so I pressed P and it changed to green as we expected. Now let's restart it and try it on the client and maybe you can guess what will happen. So I press P and nothing. So like I said before, um, the reason nothing is happening here is because this client on the right does not own this box. And so when we try to tell the server, hey, go ahead and change the color of this box, the server's like, yeah, nah, you don't own this, and so it doesn't actually change the color. So if we come into our change owner box, and so now we own the cube, and we press P, it now changes colors. And likewise, if we were to do that again, and we own it now, but then we switch over to our server, and we press P, you can see it actually changes colors on the server, even though the server doesn't, it isn't the owner of the box. So the reason that's happening is because if you again if you look at, look back at our code, we're we're calling run on server, right? So if we are on the server when we press P like we just did, um, it's going to say run on server. It doesn't care who owns it um, because we're on the server, and so you, that's why. Like even if, even if somebody else owns this, 
um, if the server calls a run on server event, it's still going to happen because we're already on the server. So I guess that's one important thing to know. But the really important thing here, and the thing that a lot of people get tripped up on, is they try to do something like this here on the right where I'm pressing P. And they're like, I'm calling a server event, but it's not actually executing. And if you were to look at the log here, if we go to Windows output log, you can see, so this is every single time I press P, you can see uh, if I come over here and I press P, you can see it just spams this message. And it's saying um, no owning connection for actor BP cube function set color server will not be processed. So it's, it's warning you and saying, hey, you don't actually own this cube. You cannot call a server event. Um, and this is something that I didn't realize for a long time because if you're just um, if you're just putting our uh, if you're just putting these events these networked events inside of your player or your player controller you won't really ever get um, these messages because like I said before you always own whoever you're possessing so if I were to be inside of my third person character event and I had a you know I had a server event inside of here that I was calling, it would work totally fine because I already own this character. But for other things in the world, um, even things like your game state or, well, the game state's a good example. So the game state is not owned by anybody. So if you try to, if you try to put a run on server event inside your game mode, it won't work. It, it will never work because, um, Nobody owns the game state. Like you cannot own the game state. Um, actually, the, the server kind of does, I guess, technically. But you can't own it, so you cannot go from client to server inside the game state. But you can go. Um, you can do multicast events, or you can do to a specific client event inside of the game state. But um, the game state is a good example of one where you cannot you cannot do client to server. Um, but for other actors in your games that you're spawning, like this cube, you know you can define who has control over them. Another good example of this is something like a weapon, like a, a gun that you pick up. So in multiplayer games, it's, it's a good idea to, when you pick up a gun, you want to set the owner of the gun to whoever picked it up. So that way you can do client to server events inside of the gun, um, you know, based on input. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover. Um, if you guys like this series, um, I'm probably going to continue on it, but I'm probably going to publish this video um, just so I can get something out there. But I'm probably going to continue on it because there's more things I want to cover um, than just this. So if you guys like this video and like the flow of it or, or like the idea, um, let me know in the comments or give me a thumbs up and I'll try to do more of these in the future. But anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.